Hi everyone. If you've played Guild Wars 2, then you know that it has one of the best communities to ever exist in a video game. People are friendly, helpful, and most of all, just nice to be around. So how did ArenaNet achieve this in a genre that is traditionally quite elitist? Well, I don't think there's a single reason for it, but instead, several smaller game design decisions that all come together to create that community that nurtures and looks after itself, which is more than can be said for many of its rivals. To start with, basically everything rewards experience, which helps you level up your character or chosen mastery, which I'll talk a bit more about later on. Players can just go and do about anything without any pressure, and they feel like they're making progress with their characters, and that's largely because they are making progress. One of my characters got to max level almost entirely through cooking, doing very little of the questing experience that's in the game. Speaking of quests, the bulk of the quest-like content occurs within the event system. Each map will have several events that can trigger, often as a direct result of player actions, and anyone nearby can take part in the event. Most of these events are also part of a larger chain, so it's fairly common to accidentally stumble into an hour-long questline with a group of players that you've never even met before. These events are often harder or longer to complete by yourself than with other players, which means you're always happy to see those other players when they do turn up. The loot in this game is also personal to you and not shared, so you never feel like another player has taken your gear, and whilst I do have mixed feelings on the personal loot system, I don't think that Guild Wars 2 suffers from the issues that come with personal loot in other games for reasons that I'll go into a bit later on. Now all of this does wonders for community spirit, helping other players is easy and rewarding which almost subconsciously trains the player to just help other people whenever they see the opportunity to do so, even when experience isn't involved. Now to be clear here, I'm not saying that Riot should just replicate the Guild Wars 2 formula, although I would be quite happy with that. The lesson that I want Riot to take away is that players should ultimately be encouraged and rewarded to play in the way that they want, while simultaneously promoting positive community behaviour by baking rewards into altruistic playstyles. That's quite a mouthful, but basically if someone wants to get to max level by crafting and running around the world resurrecting people, then let them do that. The community will be all the better for it. On release, the in-game storytelling of Guild Wars 2 left quite a bit to be desired. The action was constantly interrupted with these cutscenes showing two characters talking to each other on either side of the screen. It felt a bit awkward and was hard to listen to, and for me it really killed the pace of the game. ArenaNet threw this method of storytelling in the bin with the first expansion and started to deliver almost every piece of character dialogue to the player within the game as you run around the world. This allowed you to consume the story whilst moving to your next objective on the map, with most of these objectives taking place in the open world, meaning that you can complete what you might think of as your main story quest, whilst benefiting from the excellent community that I mentioned earlier. The voice actors often do a great job with their lines, and the chemistry between them makes it super easy and fun to listen to, and more importantly, to follow and understand. Cutscene or text-based storytelling is fine, but most people are realistically going to skip over that stuff, and just watch a summary on YouTube, which is what I did with Final Fantasy Online. I really wanted to get into the Final Fantasy story, but I just couldn't sit through all those dialogue boxes. I really, really tried, I just couldn't do it. If there's one thing that I want Riot to learn here, it's to embrace that non-intrusive method of storytelling. The Ruined King has a lot of back and forth chit chat, which is cool for lore nerds and it does add some nice flavor to it, but it stops you playing the game. And nine times out of 10, I just, think it would be better if you could continue to run around the world whilst those conversations are happening rather than being forced to watch these characters appear on the screen. Now something that I would be happy for Riot to copy and paste is how Guild Wars 2 deals with the player mount system. It's incredible. There are, at the time of recording, eight different mount types in Guild Wars 2. Each mount type works drastically differently and gives the player different benefits based on what mount you're on. The Raptor and the Springer are earned through the main story of the latest expansion and directly tie into gameplay of that expansion, but the rest are earned by completing optional in-game achievements that require you to do a bunch of stuff around the world. You really need to go out of your way if you want these mounts, which you will want to do because of how fun they are to have, not because they help you get around the world faster, just because they're fun to play with in and of themselves. My only complaint is that some of these achievements can feel somewhat tedious with some requiring quite a bit of gold to finish. I don't have my griffin yet simply because it costs too much gold, 
and I don't have the time or desire to farm that gold. The lesson here for Riot is that mounts can do so much more than what most MMO players think they can. They can truly enhance the experience and make journeying across the world fun in and of itself, rather than just a tool to get to the fun bits a little bit quicker. This might be a bit controversial, but I do think that flying mounts should be avoided in the right MMO, as they take you out of the world and away from the people within it. I much prefer running around on my raptor, jumping past other players, than just flying alone in the sky by myself. The end game in Guild Wars 2 essentially comes down to completing the Living World quest lines, which are released uh, regularly, completing achievements, obtaining collectibles, leveling your masteries, doing fractal dungeons and raiding. And they do most of these really, really well, and it gives you a ton of interesting and cool stuff to do once you hit that end game. But I say mostly because the raiding in Guild Wars 2 just isn't geared towards people like myself. As a TLDR, there just isn't much of a reason to do raids in Guild Wars 2. You can acquire Ascended Gear, which is the best in the game, as well as acquire cosmetics, but once you've got your loot or your Ascended Gear, you don't need to go back. Now this isn't so different to World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy in that respect, but where these games will entice players with stronger gear with each new raid, Guild Wars 2 doesn't do this. The Ascended Gear from Spirit Veil and the Ascended Gear from uh, this place have the same power, despite coming out four years apart in two different expansions. So unless you're serious about collecting the transmog, most players don't need to complete any of the new raids when it comes to player power. The rest of the endgame in Guild Wars 2 is really, really good if you're into collecting mounts, titles, transmog, and things like that. But if you want to raid, then you're better off playing World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy. And if Guild Wars 2 had managed to get this right for players like me, I do think I would have quit World of Warcraft a decade ago. Now, we know that Riot wants to create fun raids, but what we've learned from Guild Wars 2 is that fun isn't enough by itself. There needs to be a tangible reward tied to each new raid in order to draw the player base in and keep that scene alive. Better equipment is an easy solution, but that has its problems, so I'd like to see something else, although to be honest, I'm really not sure what without knowing more about the game itself. Whilst we're talking about PvE, let's touch on the Holy Trinity. Guild Wars 2 does not have the classic trio of tank, healer and damage. These roles do exist to some degree in some raid fights, but classes aren't designated with a specific role in the same way that you find in World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy. That said, some classes are better suited for tanking and healing, such as Ranger, which at this point is pretty much mandatory for most raid encounters due to their healing output. Guild Wars 2 and Destiny 2 have both managed to deliver fun raids without a holy trinity, proving that the system isn't necessary for creating fun and diverse fights. That said, I personally believe that a robust system like the holy trinity does help players understand the game easier and give them an identity. A friend of mine just likes being a tank and Guild Wars 2 doesn't give him that, at least not at a glance. I like the idea of swapping healer out for more of a support or controller type class that specialises in improving the performance of your raid with abilities like Nami's Blessing, Lux's Barrier or Yumi Zumi's, uh, and of course having the ability to debuff enemies as well with slow stuns and things like that. They could lean into that support mindset even more and give classes unique mechanics to complete in boss fights as well, which I think would be cooler and more interesting than simply healing and cleansing debuff stacks like you find in World of Warcraft. Lots of you seem to think the same in the comments, so hopefully Riot have at least thought about this. I suppose the lesson that I want Riot to take away from Guild Wars on this one is to implement some sort of system that works well with your plans for raid boss encounters. Guild Wars 2 added raids late in the first expansion, and the class designs from the base game just didn't fit very well with that system. I don't think it needs to be the holy trinity of damage, healer and tank, but I do think that Guild Wars 2 suffers from a pretty woolly system here and requires a fair bit of research before you can even start to put a raid comp together. And Riot should avoid having those same issues by having a clear class role system, whether that's tank healer damage or something else. The good thing about the monetization in Guild Wars 2 is that the base game is free, with expansions being a one-time purchase and no subscription fee. You can purchase the full collection, including the new expansion that's coming in February for £43, which is the most cost-effective option right now. For this money, you get access to every main expansion questline and all the cool gameplay features like expansion class specifications, masteries, mounts, and things like that. 
You don't need to spend any more money until the next expansion comes out at least, but you will probably want to. That £43 will get you 5 character slots, 5 bag slots, 5 bank slots, 2 crafting licenses and 250 storage slots per crafting material. Now each of these can be expanded with gems, which you can acquire for real life money, price is shown on the screen now, and it's not that cheap. The character slot is a big one for me in particular, as there are 9 classes in total, so if you want to play each one like me, then you'll be spending at least another £34 on character slots. Oof. You also don't get access to any of the previously released Living World stories, which sort of sit outside of the main expansion questline because ArenaNet only gives those away for free if you logged in during its live run. If you didn't do that, then these cost 200 gems per episode, and if you're a new player, then you wouldn't have done that. And the best way to get these stories is to buy the Season Pass packs, which would cost you a total of 4,160 gems, which is a total of £51. Although these do go on sale somewhat regularly, so it will be cheaper if you wait. But if you don't wait for any sales, then you're looking at just shy of £100 to play through the entire story in-game, which some people would argue isn't a bad price for 10 years of pretty high quality story content, but £100 is a lot of money whichever way you look at it. Realistically, you're probably just going to watch a summary on YouTube, which sort of defeats the point of a story-driven game, at least in my opinion. It's not just account stuff though, the gem store is also flooded with skins for your mounts, gliders, weapons and armour. A lot of this firmly sits in the novelty camp, but then some of the best looking stuff is in here as well. And it's not cheap. It's not unusual to see someone who looks really really cool, and when you ask them where they got the set, they say they got it off the gem store, often as a limited run, which sort of takes away the cool factor for me. Now Riot is no stranger to selling skins and appearances, but a large part of what makes MMOs really cool is seeing people with rare and cool looking stuff that they've earned. Assuming Riot's MMO is free to play, I'd want them to avoid putting the best looking armour and weapons in the shop and keeping these items in there as novelty items like custom animations or toys or pets and things like that. As for story content, don't punish players for not playing your game from the start like Guild Wars 2 does. You can reward longtime fans without punishing new ones and locking story off from them. The combat in Guild Wars 2 is completely different to something like World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy. To keep this brief, many of the skills in Guild Wars 2 will interact with each other in some way, and this is based on their skill type. Some skills are combo fields that can be placed on the floor to do damage, but as an added effect will modify any projectile that is shot through it, such as turning your arrows into fire arrows for example. There are a ton of these interactions which means your attention in combat is always on the fight and trying to weave your abilities in with the abilities of other players rather than simply focusing on executing your own personal damage rotation for your place on that damage meter. Something that the then executive producer Mike O'Brien, or Mike O'Brien, not sure, explicitly wanted to avoid as they described in their design manifesto published back in 2010, 12 years ago. You can also swap between two sets of weapons during a fight which at first I thought was kind of gimmicky, but it's actually a really cool system that gives you the freedom to change your skills during a fight. My thief, for example, can switch between dual daggers that are good for single target damage, but pull out my stave when there are multiple enemies around for AoE damage. My guardian, as an example, can switch from a two-handed sword over to a sword and shield mid-fight to apply protection to those around it and being a little bit more tanky. It's honestly a really cool system and makes both World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy look incredibly static by comparison. But what I will say is that Guild Wars 2 is able to lean into this sort of system because it lacks the Holy Trinity. I'm not sure how well that would work out with designated tanks and healers because right now you can just change weapon and become a healer in the middle of a fight or change weapon and become a tank in the middle of a fight. It's a different system and it works for Guild Wars 2. It might not work for Riot based on how they are designing their game. Whatever the case, it's the flexibility to change and adapt to situations on the fly that I enjoy, not the weapon system itself. I'm just sort of done with talents and covenant and conduit stuff that we find in World of Warcraft that requires you to do a 15 minute round trip to change from single target to AoE. It's, it's just not fun. That is not a fun system. And I really hope that Riot have seen that and do not put something like that in their game. For the love of God, please. As for closing comments, because I'm just conscious of the time, Riot do have their work cut out for them. There's a lot of expectations on this game from a lot of different communities. 
uh, and I think we probably need to just temper our expectations a little bit on what we can realistically expect. But before I end, I, I just want to say if you haven't played Guild Wars 2, I'd encourage you to give it a go. It's free to play. There's a lot of restrictions on the free account, unfortunately. Like you can't even talk to people sometimes. But give that game a go. I promise you'll have a good time with it. And if you don't, it's free. So you didn't lose anything anyway, apart from a few hours to download. So yeah, thanks very much. Thanks for listening. And um, I'll see you next time. Thank you.